안녕하세요, 여러분의 한국어 선생님 고빌리입니다. I have to admit, a month ago when I started preparing for this video series, I knew very little about BTS. I mean, I knew their names and of course some of their songs. How couldn't you know Dynamite and Butter? But I wasn't a fan, nor did I really get why BTS was so big. So that was a month ago, and now I get it. <laughs> Speaking of which, you're all looking forward to watching their reunion in 2025, right? Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, I am a Korean teacher. I've been studying Korean now for almost 18 years, teaching it here on YouTube for over 10 years, and I can speak it fluently. So in this series, I'm going to cover how their Korean sounds to other Korean speakers, how each member uses dialect, any unique expressions that stand out, and just overall how each of their personalities shines through in the way that they speak Korean. Now, I'm not perfect at Korean since I'm not a native speaker, but I will do the best that I can. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please give this video a like and subscribe, or please also consider joining my Patreon and sending me your ideas for other videos that I can make. So for this first video, I'll be talking about BTS's leader, RM. Why him, you ask? Isn't it obvious? Kim Namjoon, Kim Seok Jin, Min Yoon Gi, Jung Ho Seok, Park Ji Min, Kim Tae Hyung, Jeon Jung Gook, BTS. So that's the order I'm going in. And I'll try to give each member equal time. But first, a quick intro into BTS. Well, BTS or Bangtan Sonyeondan, literally Bulletproof Boy Scouts, is a seven member Korean musical group that first debuted in 2013 and has transformed globally what people know as Korean music. As of today, BTS is the best selling Korean music group ever, and I can't see that changing anytime soon. RM, also known as Kim Nam Joon, the leader of BTS, was born in 1994 and grew up in the city of Goyang, just northwest of Seoul. As a child, he was interested in writing poetry, which then evolved into writing music, writing songs, and then rapping. And this is important because his interest in writing has definitely influenced the way that he speaks, as you'll see soon. But you already knew all of this, right? So let's just hear how he speaks Korean, and I have a few clips. These are all examples of what's known as 신, 조, 어, literally newly coined words, and this is essentially just the latest slang words that typically only very young Koreans will keep up with. And since I know you're going to ask, let me define each of these words. 극대노 is slang for extreme anger, so when someone gets really mad, 졸귀 means super adorable, and it comes from the verb 귀엽다, meaning to be cute. 극딜 is being teased or mocked. 국룰 literally means national rule, but it's used jokingly, kind of like the rule. You know, it's the rule. Whenever you go to a BTS concert, you have to do the fan chant, kind of like that. And then finally, 일코 is normal clothes from the word 일반인, meaning a normal person, and 코스프레, so cosplay, cosplaying as a regular person and not letting anyone know that you're actually a gigantic fan of someone. So think of a K-pop fan not wearing any K-pop merch. Now, why am I teaching you a bunch of slang words? Because RM uses these sort of trendy words, these new words, all of the time when he speaks. And while I would definitely expect this sort of slang usage from someone who spends maybe more of their time online, I didn't expect RM, who definitely has a busy schedule, to know so many of these new words. And that means that he cares a lot about keeping up with new trends, not just in the music industry, but in general, and he takes a lot of time to see what's going on in the world. So while these are just a few examples, um, judging by these ones, I'm pretty sure that RM will know every single trendy Korean word in Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I noticed is that RM can speak 
fast. Well, when he wants to. And many beginners might actually think that speaking quickly will make you sound fluent, uh, but that's not true. Speaking correctly makes you sound fluent, even at slower speeds. However, RM does both. He actually sounds clear and he's fast, even for a native Korean speaker. And the fact that he's able to make coherent sentences at this speed shows me that his brain is probably working overtime in the language department. Something that I felt more and more as I watched RM is that while his Korean isn't the most difficult to understand, and you'll see what I mean later when we get to Shuga, uh, you definitely need to be at least an advanced Korean speaker to understand everything that he's saying. Not just being able to have conversations, but also familiar with poetic grammar forms, and these are less often used in regular speech. So there's definitely a sort of fanciness to his Korean at times. In fact, let's take a short look at his writing too. So this is a thank you letter that he wrote to his fans, and you can see Dear Army at the top. First of all, this is really smooth and easy to read handwriting for me. And do you see that he wrote it all in pen? There are no obvious mistakes, no scribbling. So let's look at this sentence here. 감히 오늘 쏟아진 모든 사랑을 목격했다고 할순 없겠지만 이렇게 짧은 편지로 남아 감사히 받습니다. Now, because he writes a bit poetically, I've done my best to translate it here. Um, I dare not say that I have witnessed all of the love that has poured out today, but I do graciously accept it, if only through this small letter. In fact, the entire letter is written in this same style. It's a lot more like a poem than just a note. Uh, let's look at one more. This is a social media post that he made. This one's also quite long, so let's just look at this one sentence here in the second paragraph. 이런저런 떠다니는 생각들을 얼마만큼 어떻게 전해야 할지 아직도 잘 모르겠습니다만은 그저 내가 사랑하고 우리를 사랑하는 모든 분들이 가급적 오랜 시간 편안했으면 좋겠다는 생각만큼은 전혀 변함이 없습니다. I'll do my best to translate. Although I still do not yet know in what way or how much that I should convey these thoughts that are floating around in my head, it's only that I hope, as I always have hoped, that everyone who I love and who loves me can be at peace for as long of a time as possible. Not only are some of his sentences quite long, like this one, but more than that, his grammar is quite advanced level. For example, he says this word, kagupjok. And kagupjok is a slightly more formal sounding noun that's used with an if form and means if possible or as possible. So here, as long of a time as possible. There are other ways to say as long as possible, but RM chose this one that sounds more poetic. And it's not only poetic, RM's speech overall sounds very refined, even when he doesn't need to be. Speaking of refined, let's talk for a second about how all of the members address each other, specifically how they all use the word na for I or me. We'll talk about politeness levels a bit more in detail later when I get to the other members, but typically na can be used when you're talking to someone who's the same age as you or to someone younger, as long as you're close with them. To older friends, however, even if you're close, you would typically use the word cho, which has the same meaning, instead of na. And using cho would show more politeness and more humility, and it sounds a bit softer than using the more casual word na. So for example, that would be using chonin or tega instead of nanin or nega. But except for some special cases, all of the members only use na to refer to themselves, regardless of their ages. And this really stands out to me because it shows that although they're being respectful to each other, and uh, you'll see how in the next episodes, Although they're still respectful and speaking properly, by using na, they're speaking to each other almost as if they're on the same level, like siblings. And I think it's just a sign of how close everyone is that they would all choose to speak that way to each other. And I also think that this makes sense because although their ages are different, they each take on different roles in BTS. For example, RM is the leader, but he's not the oldest member, that would be Jin. 
And even the youngest member, Jungkook, also uses na when speaking toward Jin, at least most of the time. Again, in some special cases, you will still hear members use cho to refer to themselves, but not for their regular tone of voice. Here the members are talking about how often someone should bathe, and after RM gets caught, he admits that he actually washes himself up to three times a day. Wow. His actual line is, 저 하루에 세번 씻는데? And not only is he saying 저, which is extra respectful, but he's using it to reply to Jimin, who's younger than him. By using 저 instead of 나, I think that he's just trying to sound a bit humorous here, and also a bit more humble since he got caught. So if you're paying attention, you'll hear RM as well as the other members constantly adapting their speech, such as when they're just being humorous or when they want to be more respectful. Okay, so now we've talked about how RM's Korean sounds refined and complex, but it goes even further than that because I found out that I also do something similar to what he does. <laughs> 원래 영화를 한 번, 두 번, 세번 이렇게 보는 스타일 아닌데 그 영화는 처음에 봤을 때 기분이 너무 안 좋았는데 계속 생각이 나서 극장에 가서 여러 번 보고 네, 집에서도 한번 봤습니다. 아이스티에 나와가지고 You've already seen how RM's written sentences can be long, but it's the same for his speaking. Not only does he make long sentences, but he'll sometimes also go off on a tangent and then come back to the main topic again. I'm not saying that he rambles or anything, but he has a unique way of talking about several things all at once. Now, I'm also not saying that RM is totally me, but I definitely match the most with his style of Korean speaking because I talk like this too. 나는 웃는 거는 제이홉. 근데 말하는 거는 진. 그러니까 웃을 때 제이홉이 제일 웃겨. 내 생각에. 크게 크게 웃잖아. <웃음> 이렇게 웃잖아. 근데 진이 제일 재밌어. 왜냐면 진이 아재 개그를 좋아하잖아. 나도 좋아하는 건데. By that I mean talking about different things at once. Funnily enough, I was also big into writing when I was younger, and I actually wanted to be a writer when I grew up. Another thing though that RM does that I also notice that I do is that sometimes I will trail off a bit when I'm speaking. I think that being RM's English translator would be such a difficult job because you'd have to often wait for him to finish his entire thought before you can even start translating. And again, I do this sometimes too because I'm usually thinking about what I want to say next while I'm still making my first sentence. So my guess is that that's what RM is also doing. 운동을 하면은 땀도 많이 나고 더워지고 특히 더운 날에 굳이 셔츠를 입고 있을 필요 없는 것 같은데 뭐 엄청 얇은 거 아닌 이상 so let's take a moment to talk about RM's dialect. I said that RM is from a city called Koyang, which doesn't really have a distinct dialect. People from there will just use standard Korean, like in Seoul. But RM still uses some dialect from time to time. Why? Because he's weird. I mean, because he's unique. No, I think it's because uh, several of the other members who do occasionally use dialect have influenced his speaking style. 저 친구가 이제 광주에서 왔기 때문에 광주 억양이 살짝 밴드다가 경상도 친구들이 쓰는 이제 사투리 가끔 나오는 사투리를 가끔 이렇게 뚝뚝 따라하다 보니까 어설프게 제 해가지고 거시기하네요. 뭐? 마 단디에라 단디에라 Training together every day with six other people and hearing other dialects occasionally from them, it seems that some of that rubbed off on him as well. Specifically, RM can use a mixture of Chola dialect from Jehope, as well as Gyeongsang dialect, such as Busan dialect, mostly from Jimin and Jungkook. <laughs> 
Now, in many cases, this is done intentionally just as a joke, and you can hear it in his voice tone that he's he's doing it just to be funny. But sometimes he legitimately does use dialect words and expressions, usually Kyungsang dialect, in his regular speaking, and I think he doesn't even realize, or maybe he doesn't really care that it's dialect. <laughs> <laughs> now, any analysis of RM would be incomplete without also mentioning Namturi, which is a combination of Namjun with the word Saturi, meaning just a regional dialect. So, Namturi means Namjun dialect, and it's used to describe the unique way that RM sometimes speaks. And this includes him mixing dialects together, but it also includes completely new words that he creates and uses as part of his vocabulary. For a recent example of this, in his single Wildflower, he created the word flower work, which is a combination of flower and firework. But Namturi goes beyond just song lyrics. Oh, check it up. Yeah, check it up. Check it up. Okay. Check it up. Guys, One example is the word check it up and I've written it just like this, but there isn't really an official way to spell it. It's actually RM's Korean pronunciation of the English expression, check it up, which I also don't know where he got that from. And he uses this expression in various situations to mean something like, take care of it or work hard and uh, other meanings. But RM's unique usage of namturi is just such a gigantic topic that I couldn't completely cover it today. So maybe I'll save that for a sequel. And okay, I could keep going on and on, but we've covered enough for this video. So I think we should just let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Sugar space. What are you talking? If you enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more. Also, if you would like to support me in making more videos like these, please also consider joining my Patreon page or becoming a member here on YouTube. I'll include links to both of those in the description. In fact, it was actually a supporter who originally asked me to make this video series about BTS in the first place. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Kram, Tame Toba.